Hi everyone and welcome to Tap Into Your Creativity today in my studio. Um, we have guest artist guest, uh, Michael Hedges. Um, this is the third time that we're trying to go live. So I'm hoping that this time will work. Uh, Michael is going to join us and I hope that his internet is working and if it doesn't work this time around we're going to have to fix it and find another time uh, to go for it. So thank you for staying with me and giving me a chance here to do this interview with Michael. And uh, hopefully he will join us uh, super soon here. And I am so sorry again, like I said, you just don't know what happens uh, every time with this interviews, you kind of hold your breath and hoping that uh, technology will pull through and will work through its magic. So um, I'm just waiting for him to join us again and hopefully his um, internet is working and his Instagram is working. So let's give him a couple of seconds here to join us. So he's right there and, and hopefully magic will happen. So we're just waiting for Michael to join us right now and it should work, God willing right? <laughs> it says it's connecting. So I don't know what to say. I hope he connects. Michael, if you can hear me, just um, maybe there you are. Can you hear me? I think you're frozen, but maybe you will not get frozen. Maybe you will We'll come through with this. <laughs> Michael? Uh, darn. Darn. Thank you, Amy. I just hope that this could work. I know, Michael, Michael, right? We're so excited. We just can't see you or hear you. This is absolutely craziness. Um, there, can you hear me, Michael? I know. Ah. Oh my God, Michael. Okay, it will. It, let's just wait for a minute. Don't worry. Let's just it, just start talking and see if it works. Okay. Oh, are you there? <laughs> okay. So you guys, I'm going to tell you about the collection, which is really cool. Um, so the June and July collection. Oh my God, are you there? You're actually there. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Am I? I hear you. I went back to I went back to Wi-Fi. My kid, hey, don't go too far. I'm having so much fun. Sorry. This is great. Okay. <laughs> Come here, Brady. Oh, this yeah, is bad. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Thank you for not yeah, giving I up on me. Are. I. It, it, oh my God. You're lucky. Right. It's a good We're cause. Good. I, We're, this up. is all great. And okay. Like I was saying. We are rocking it. We are oh, making money up. for Feeding America. Sorry and that's that. the most important thing, right? This interviews okay. and, and it's amazing, but technology sucks. Yeah. Congrats. Absolutely. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> and we get one shot with Michael. Yeah, so in we this get interview, it right. you can all forget about it when we're done, so but just don't You guys to the don't that's understand what, what it took me to bring yeah. Michael into this interview today. So I'm just loving yeah, this. Yeah, because I'm not I'm doing this again. absolutely loving it. So, yes, love. So people are just coming in there. They love your paintings. And um, <laughs> and I'm just so happy. I'm glad here. you are. So I'm just going <laughs> to um, just leave the comments for a minute. And then I'm going to take them off so people can actually oh, see your nice. work. But um, so, Michael, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, who are you? And where, where do you live? Okay. Uh, 
I live, I'm, uh, my name is Mike, and I am an artist, and I live outside Chicago in this town called Oak Park. So and we are in my bit, studio, yeah. which is behind my house that I built childhood. eight, and, nine years ago, um, and I'm an abstract painter. I'm also, oh God, I was going to say, I, uh, I grew up here in this town, uh, about eight blocks away, and uh, it was a great place to grow up. I never thought oh, I'd end up back here. Wow. Then I met a girl, yeah, and know. she happened to be from Oak Park. And so now I live here again, and my in-laws live across the street. So that's amazing. Yeah. So uh, it comes in let's handy go when back you have and twins. Talk a but yeah, so they're across the street, and um, as an so artist, now we're back in a park. Um, when did you know that you had an ability yeah. for art or a love of art? When did that start for you? My mother would always say that I would draw a lot when I was a kid, cartoons, stuff like that. And then I was more into sports and kind of chasing girls, which I wasn't very good at either, in high school. And then my sophomore year of high school, my you have the parent-teacher conferences that are every, you know, a couple months. And I always dreaded them because I was always then grounded after it. And then this one time they went in and my art teacher told my folks – that she saw something in me with art and I never thought anything about art outside of just drawing. And that led to them coming home and me not being grounded. And then I started some college credits at the art Institute downtown while I was in high school. And then that's kind of what started it for me and got me into it. And then I was 16, 17 years old at the time. And then I've been doing it ever since I didn't paint it all back then. It was all just drawing and stuff. And then I got out of here and I went to the small liberal arts school in Dubuque, Iowa, Laura's College, and studied painting under Tom Jewell Vitale. And so I was 19, 18, 19. And that's when I started picking up paint and started with the paint. And they so were terrible when I started. And then I kept that going and doing it. And then, um, so going and taking now, those so been courses doing it all this and time having time. Um, teachers and I think they get better now. change your way of thinking of how to be an artist, did that influence you at that time? What? It was super intense and intimidating because I was really kind of preppy looking. I, the opposite of maybe what I look like now. And I was, yeah, no tattoos, long hair or anything. And, um, you know, I'm 16, 17, and these are kids and adults in college classes. And so I'd look around and see the purple Mohawks and all. And so I was just intimidated off the bat. But then what I realized was the more somebody looked like an artist, the worse their work actually was. So then I started to get a little bit more comfortable because, you know, you look at what other people are doing, like life drawing, color classes, stuff like that. But it, it kind of it did help me because I started just with the hard stuff, I guess, so to say, like learning how perception and drawing and all that first, which is nothing like what I do now. But I think if I didn't do that, it wouldn't have led me into painting. I mean, I rarely draw anymore. Um, except on the canvas, you know, with, with paint, but not that I don't do figurative stuff did or anything like that. Right but I think it really did it's, help it's, me get you know, going. Once but then once your drawing, I was introduced to paint, um, under your belt, that just like kind of changed your one-on-one kind of thing, right? Under your belt. Um, did you feel that when you made that switch to non-objective art, um, that freedom of not yeah. being so um, constrict in your drawings or... Did you miss it? How was that for you? No, it was great because it didn't matter. When I would draw, I would just try to get it perfect, and it just never was. And so I just assumed it had to look like a photograph. Now it doesn't, but it was just – it was more stressful. And then when I started painting, I, mean, I had bad days painting too, but – you get that rush when you get something right or color right. And it's just more freedom to go. And back when I started painting, you know, when you can't paint work big. So I was painting big and so 
basically just more um, room to go. And it so was, your professor I think, has me. had a really that's big impact just made on me you. Keep wanting we to talked about this yesterday, and I think if that, that makes any sense. Um, he showed you a way that um, maybe the love of art and um, and the love of painting. And yeah. I, I don't know how then you transition that into showing and being a businessman and being on social media and having all these different caps all of a sudden all at once. Well, that, that was something when we, yeah, you go to, maybe they're different now, but when you go to art schools or anything that for an art degree, <laughs> Maybe it's different now, but they don't teach you anything on how to make a living at it. When you get out of art school, you're out of, that's it. It's pretty much like not going to school and except for what you learn, but nothing with that. So in the beginning, I would just, I'd rent out bars. I would uh, frame warehouses, any place I could find and just rent it out and put on my own shows just to try to get, because this was, you know, I mean, we're old, not that old, but this was before all the, the internet and stuff like that and just try to get them out there and out there the best I could. And then they had these expos um, where you can pay to get your own booth and very expensive, but you just, you just had you to get it out there. And it didn't get out there. How did you... Well, nobody was going to see it back then. So I did that for years and, um, Oh, yeah, we would, I mean, the downtown Chicago at the Merchandise Mart, they had one. Yeah, I would rent U-Hauls. I would go it up. I'd drag my sister-in-law, my wife, whoever I could find to help me set them up and take them down. And, and you know, and so you have this rush. You're going to put your art up and you're going to do it. And then you're bummed when nothing sells or, you know, something like that. But so, I mean, it takes the wind out of your sails a lot at the end. But in hindsight, it actually was a good thing because one of those expos I did turned out to be a conduit right to the McCormick Gallery in Chicago who represents me. And it was, wasn't until a couple of years later that they then contacted me, but it was off seeing my work there. And so that alone was worth all the time and money I spent back then. But back then I think I figured it was a failure because I didn't make any money. So I looked at it as a, if I'm making money, you know, like a business, then, you know, I'm in the right direction, but I, I didn't make any money. So, um, but it ended up paying off later. And then now I would say with like Instagram, first I did Facebook and that's okay. And they're all okay. But then the Instagram was kind of less political and less, it's more just pictures, you like it or not. And so when I started with the Instagram, that kind of, took off and then a website, which is outdated now, but cause I kind of just use the Instagram, but it, that helped me and saved a lot of money for like artists. You'd have to remember you made your portfolios with slides. So to make a set of slides, you'd have to hire a photographer, then you have to get them made. And you know, maybe they were five, six bucks to get a little portfolio together. You mail out hundreds of these things. Most of the galleries, you don't know if they ever even look at them. They could be thrown out. And nowadays you can just, you want to find the galleries that look like your work. Like I wouldn't send my work if I was starting off to an impressionistic art gallery. It doesn't make any sense or a pop art gallery or something like that. But so if you find the galleries that you think, you know, that your work would fit into, then you just send a nice email with a link to your website, your Instagram or something. And that's all free. But when we started, that wasn't, you had to, you know, stamp postage down to everything. You had to do it all yourself. It took a lot more time. Now it's just a quick off and you go. And, you know, it starts off slow. You build followers. But Instagram has led to some, the Space Gallery in Denver, one of my favorite galleries. And Michael over there, he found me, the owner, on Instagram three or four years ago. And he has just beautiful galleries. And I've been there ever since from meeting him just had a show new orleans up instagram and asheville uh off instagram a lot of you know from the gallery standpoint and so then there's a lot of folks pandemic, that come and look in, um, especially with the pandemic and stuff in your backyard just through like you said. looking at um, it on instagram and, and then contacting me how so it's, have you been able to just concentrate and do your thing and um 
Have you been able yeah. to generate work? How is that? How is that for you right now? In the beginning, it, it, it was good because, you know, we're in Chicago, Midwest, so it, it's kind of cold. Spring was coming on when COVID was starting, but that's usually when I'm in high gear trying to – I just came off three shows last year, so I, I had to make more work, and so I was going. And then the kids were in school. I didn't have to deal with any of that. And then this hit, but having my studio here was nice. But then after a while, we just kind of – went out of town, but I had got a lot started. Let's, can we talk and about that Normally I was telling you that Let's I like to take a couple months off from you painting a year, so and it's usually in the summer when the kids are home and stuff and not as much. But What does that make it's, you? What happens in those two months? Yeah. For you? <laughs> I tried to see it. I drive my wife nuts, for one, because she... And I get crabby if I don't, and it doesn't have to be good, but if I'm not out here doing something, I can tell, you know, it just get crabby. But I, that's something I picked up from my professor too, just to kind of reset. And so, you know, maybe sometimes it's six weeks, but in there, but then it's summer and you're doing things. I got little kids. So, but I, I just don't get the time out here. But then when I come back in, then I'm just going. And then this year with all the, with COVID, these expos and stuff that are coming up and art shows aren't happening. So I didn't feel that deadline pressure, but I still wanted to paint. But so it's, but I took a good two, three months off, but more towards the spring. And then I started maybe 10 or 20 paintings. And then now I'm back trying to finish those up, which a couple of them I'll show you. I have just recently finished up. And then now Normally, kids go back to school, and then I get to do a lot more, but they'll be 10 feet away in there. But um, but it's fun, but it's nice that it's here. I used to have one in the city, but to get there and back, it just wasn't so feasible is this your, your full to get a lot of work done. Now? So I can be out here all night or in the day, and I'm just, uh, five, you know, 10 steps away if I'm needed, you know, in the house. And my kids come out here and paint, too. It's pretty close. When I was – when I was – I, I do it a lot and, 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 you know, I do okay at it. You know, you, you can always, I guess, <laughs> have a little bit more money. I, I, I bet you I can only do this if I didn't have two kids at once, which, you know, having twins, you don't get any, buy one and ha get one free deals on anything. So, but when I was a kid, I started a, a house painting business and then I would do that in summers when I come home from school. And then I did that while I was setting up my own shows when I got out of college and, you know, I've had that 20 something years. And so I still have it. And so I've got some really good guys that um, handle most of that, but I uh, check in and do stuff, but then I, I spend as much time as I can out here. I suppose I just, I don't have the, I don't know the heart or anything just to, Shut 100%. that down. I think it it and almost like it, it in have this. Yeah, I kind of just like having the both, and I think that side and, helped me um, with my. It's, it's, yeah, it's uh, it's a good thing to business to keep part, both. you know. And if it's if it's working on, obviously it is. I mean, you're you're lucky enough that it it actually is yeah. working for you. It's a formula that has been working. It, it's just. Yeah, I mean, and only because of the pressure of just being a father, really, because, you know, you got to provide for your kids. And then when you're younger than, you know, I knew artists, oh, you're not really an artist if you have another job or, you know, all that, which I think is all, yes. you know, bullshit. You, right. you can, and I you're know, an artist, and you know, I know you you're an artist, with so a I don't care if, yeah, if you're a doctor and I know or that dentist you don't or, sign you know, paintings. clean the streets, um, you know, if you paint. Not on the front. So can you tell us why you don't do that? Yeah. Not on the front. Yeah, sign them on the back. I sign, yes, I sign them on the front or on the back how I meant them to go. But dealing with designers who, 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 are, who are great, who are, and they're interesting, and then they have their own ideas and stuff. So it, it's kind of uh, a fun thing to do most of the time. But they'll have a painting, and maybe it's a rectangle, but they want it to go more horizontal or whatever 
and it looks a little awkward with your name going up the side or back. So that's why I signed the back and how I meant it to go. But designers are looking at rooms and a lot of clients are too. Um, I mean, there's two schools of thought on that, I guess. Some buy art because it matches their couch or something like that, which fine, but I don't, I think you should buy art because you like the painting. But with that said, if you like a painting I did upside down or on whatever, if that's how it speaks to you, then I don't see anything wrong with that. So um, when I was asked, when Tom at McCormick Gallery asked me about that seven years ago, I could tell, you know, I guess right. he must have exactly. asked other artists and exactly. some, you know, uh, well, weren't I'm happy with that, to but it didn't bother me at all. Now, you know, so, I mean, if the check um, clears, you can do whatever you want. Let's go ahead and take a little tour of your studio. Yeah. <laughs> and I know, I know, I know I'm suffering already, but let's try it. We have to show your work. You sure you want to do this? That means I got to pick up the to. phone and I don't know uh, what's going to happen. It's the best part of it. All right. Okay. Yeah, you can. So here's my studio. <laughs> and you know what? Can I click a button? Yeah. Okay. There we go. I'm learning. You're teaching me. So these are some that I started late How winter and they? then finished in the last month or so. And I just got them fra framed. Um, and so here's a couple. Uh, these are on this wall over here. These are roughly 40 by 50 range, something like that. And then this one over here well, is about, 60 um, by 60 and minute. this um, one here is um, 60 by 54 a bit on that or come in and closer. then um, tell us um, the process behind your yeah. thoughts when you start a new painting <laughs> so when I start a painting the only thing I know for sure is the size because <laughs> I stretched it. And then I will have an idea. Maybe it's the business side of me, but you know, if well, I do like 10 paintings at a time. So you see this whole room. So imagine all these are just new canvases. And so I bounce around and do a lot at once, but so I'll know the size and then I might say, okay, I want to make this one predominantly with some reds or one with blues or greens or whatever. And so that's all I know going into it. But that part could change because if I see something I like and the next thing I know, all the reds out of the painting or the blue, and then that's just fine. I kind of let it dictate, you know, as the day goes where I'm going to end up with it. And so that's kind of no, how I, I started, but a, I always start. Dictionary. Um, with around 10 at once because I just um, from one I don't know if it's the, the ADHD next, in me or whatever I can't a, sit you know, still I think that's the best way to do things as an artist to have multiple at the same time because it informs what's happening from one to the other and I also believe that um, you have very strong line marking um, that you know I think that that's probably right. your, your biggest staple on how you create like almost like um, you choose the line and you, with your eye, you kind of go and see where it's going to stop or where it's going to lead you to. Um, so can you, can you talk a little bit about that? Right. So when I start these and I kind of know where they're going, there's three things I try to balance, the color, the line, and then the, texture and so some of these don't have too much texture and it's hard to see on camera but if i yeah. can get those to balance out then that's when i would consider the work done and so that could be tricky to figure out but that's kind of Yeah, it looks great, but the composition comes out great. Okay, Michael, I think we need to put back the phone where it was before so we don't lose 
Yeah. I don't know if you can hear me, Michael. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, there we go. Great. He's going to come back. I promise. Well, I'm not promising. There. Yeah. Okay. Are you there? I know. Are you there? Can you hear me? Michael? Can you hear me? Yeah? Okay. All right. You're there. All right. Let's just not touch anything else. There? Good. <laughs> Um, so, so yeah. tell me, um, what are the materials that I'm you're here. using? I'm not going to touch it. Okay. It will, it will, it will be okay. What are ah, the materials you're that you're using? a little bit, but it's coming. Michael, can you hear me? Well, I'll tell you the materials that Michael uses. Um, once he starts, uh, using the phone, um, I think it will, it will come back. But the materials that he uses is oils uh, and acrylic. Correct, Michael? Correct. So you start with acrylic, you start with acrylic. Okay, so you, Yeah, yep. There, don't touch it's it. Oil and acrylic, yes. <laughs> okay, we're good, we're good. Don't touch it, don't touch it. Is it working? Okay, bear with us. Bear with us. He's fixing it. I can see it. But anyways, he uses acrylic as his base, and then he comes with oil paintings and finishes the painting. So, um, yeah. There? And he layers it that way. And he likes to start with acrylics because he wants to make sure that that part goes faster because oils don't dry um, as fast as acrylics. And so he wants to make sure that that process goes fast and then he can go into the details of the line and all that. And You're so, doing so good. Yay, are you back? You're back? I know. Oh, okay. It's okay. Hey, we were doing so good for a while. <laughs> I'm back. So tell us about, I was telling people about the process, mm. but nobody better than explaining you the process. We shouldn't have messed with it. That's my fault. I shouldn't have touched it. Darn. Yeah, you can hear me, right? Let me see. You're good. I can hear you and oh, I can see you. Um, you're, <laughs> oh man. Um, well guys there, are we good? I don't know if we're good or not. Um, I'm going to turn back on comments. Oh, there. And, um, if you guys have questions, please, please feel free to ask me the questions and hopefully, uh, okay. That's awesome. Don't touch the phone anymore. Hopefully you there. will. I can hear you now. It will all be okay now. Maybe not. Um, so what Michael has, which is a great cool thing, is on his wall. Michael, I can hear you. I can see you. I think. Um, he has, uh, can you talk about your wall for a minute if you can hear me? Okay, I'm gonna talk about the oil and the paint. Um, so how Michael does his process is he grabs acrylic paintings and he starts his mark making, um, with acrylics. Then after those dry out, then he uses the oil. So it's, he literally uses both and he says they work beautifully because the acrylic paint, you know, like I said, it dries easier than the oil paint. And so... Um, you can always go 
acrylic first and oil second. You can't do it the other way around because it doesn't work because oil doesn't mix with water. So um, <laughs> I'm seeing all the snapshots of Michael moving around in the studio. I hope he's seeing himself. Um, and what he uses for storage is really cool. He has um, a shelf where he has small um, paintings on the top of the shelf. And Michael, are you there? Yes. Darn, I almost had him, I thought. Um, and he has those shelves that, um, that carry all the small work. And then he has the big work storing, uh, storage somewhere else, but like he can utilize his space so well, you guys. What? Do you want me to start a new one, Michael? Is that what you say? Did you want me to start a new one? Okay, well, I'm gonna save this one and uh, I'm gonna put it up on Instagram and hopefully he can resolve this problem. <laughs> and, um, but what I wanted to talk to you about and hopefully this will resolve quickly is he has a system on the wall that he puts two, um, two by fours on the, on the top and then on the bottom. And that way the camera and then um, he is able to put a, um, like a wood, um, again, I think it's a two by four, or maybe a two by two, and it goes on top of the beam. And, um, and then he's able to move that super easy. So it just works beautifully that way for him. It's like, um, it's a really great wall system and um, is, he's connecting. So I hope that, okay. Are you there? Oh, shoot. Okay. Um, anyways, well, uh, I, oh, there is the wall system that I'm talking about. So, yeah, Mike, can you hear me, Mike? Almost. Yeah. See, he's putting his work up. Yeah. I heard you saying that, so I did it. Oh, I had the... that's amazing. See how cool that is. It's so easy. Yeah. And then you can slide them around. Stick them back up there. Yeah. Like, just like that. Like magic. And then just like you're that. small... Your small paintings, you frame yourself, correct? Yes, the smaller ones, you know, I do them on linen. And I, I turn the camera around, but then I'm afraid I'll lose everything. And um, these are just simple lattice pieces and people seem to dig them. And then, cause I'm not a framer. So my framer custom makes all the larger ones, but these on linen, it kind of gives it the vibe of an older painting from like my heroes from the fifties and stuff. And so with these kind of rustic looking frames on them, they just kind of finish it off and they're not expensive to do. And it's just with wood lattice pieces. Yeah. So you can pick up it at Menards amazing. or Home Depot. And then you just kind of, I mix stains together to make them look old and you just hammer them on the sides of the stretcher. And they look nice. That's, a, that's really great. Some, what do you use to, what kind of nails do you use to hammer into them or like, how do you how do you do that just little wire wire or carpet nails just tiny little ones oh. and some yeah. the carpet nails have the thicker heads so then if you yeah. look if you go to an art museum or something you look at you see the nail heads on the sides of some of the older the greats their frames and so yeah. it's just kind of to mimic that so that's where those came from yeah, yeah. And um, can you tell us now, you can tell us in your own words, the process about putting the acrylic first and then the oils and what kind of oils do you use? The, the, that's just more the science of it all. If you put 